So PlayStation is in trouble. At least that's what everyone's saying online. In light of yesterday's insane, crazy, pretty, actually just normal all around presentation from Xbox, people are saying that PlayStation's uh, last nail is in the coffin. I thought that was very interesting, as someone who owns a PlayStation, um, that doesn't seem uh, like it follows in what I think, but I guess we should take it apart, right? Yesterday, after the um, presentation from Xbox and them explaining themselves essentially, and having to address the rumors that I fell for and I'm so embarrassed that I fell for them, they basically stated that a lot of things that people thought were happening weren't happening. With the exception of something like games, a few games, four in particular, are coming over to game uh, from Game Pass and Xbox Studios exclusively, uh, from Xbox Studios and Xbox exclusivity to, are they Xbox Studios? I don't know. I just know that four games are coming over to other platforms. That's what they said, other platforms. They didn't really specify which other platforms, they just said that other platforms. And, you know, we can expect that to be PlayStation and Nintendo because those seem to be the other platforms, but who knows, right? Today's AeroPress because I'm feeling a little bit spicy. I like AeroPress, it's fun, but it's been a while since we've done AeroPress, so today is all about the AeroPress, which is super inexpensive. If you want to get into a nice custom craft coffee like I have here, um, AeroPress is a very, very easy entry. Highly recommend. Highly recommend. Wetting the filter up so that we don't get that paper taste in our coffee. Now, one of the biggest things that I saw in the comment section of my most recent video about the whole uh, podcast was that 34 million users, all these different things, Call of Duty and stuff, uh, one of them in particular that I thought was interesting, but then I started to see a little bit of a trend of this, this, uh, this thought process, which was... Um, PlayStation owners are really going to be sad when uh, these games like Call of Duty are going to be brought over to Game Pass. Now, if you watched yesterday's thing, then you heard uh, Phil Spencer and some of the other blokes and dudes and chick, whatever her name is, uh, talk about how their intention for all this stuff is to bring more games to more gamers. And so the exclusivity though it's something that we've all been used to for a while, may not be maintained in the same at the same capacity that we have seen it, right? They're starting to bring games over to uh, other platforms. And the reason for that is to give more games to more players, which is great, right? I'm, I'm all for that, especially now that I'm a Steam Deck owner and a Lenovo Legion Go owner, and eventually an Asus ROG Alley owner, <laughs> once the second one drops. I'd like to see some of these games elsewhere so that I can try them and play them in different form factors. As a dad, I need that portability. And I only have those other platforms to test them. I don't use them um, as much, right? I, there's no need for me to have a Lenovo Legion Go, a Steam Deck, and an Asus ROG Ally. But I do it so that I can test them to help you guys figure out which one is going to be the best one for you. All right, 15 grams of coffee, 200 and 50 grams of water, inversion method, not inversion, this is just regular pour over method. We're gonna drop, do this, get it all the way over to the top. Let's go 200, 25, 30, 40, and 45, come on now, 50. Okay, what, <laughs> 249.5 this on here. What we do here is we just lit it, seal it, go up a little bit to create a vacuum. Oh gosh. Come on. Come on now. Don't burn yourself when you do this. Create that vacuum seal. Pull it off and let it do it. Let it cook. I, for one, am excited to see these games go to different platforms. But the thought that PlayStation is over and that they've really lost it because of Phil Spencer and these other dudes and chick going, yo, these games are coming over to Game Pass. It's the best place to be, the best games to play, and they're always going to be available day one to you subscribers, remind, reminding you subscribers, is, is odd. Um, because 
I see I've owned a PlayStation since the PlayStation 1. I've owned an Xbox since 2021. I don't use the Xbox as much. We're at 90 seconds, so we give it a swirly swirl to get that agitation going. Um, I don't primarily use Xbox. I primarily use um, PlayStation. But I, as a PlayStation owner, have always purchased my games. Yes, I am a subscriber to PlayStation Plus Premium. And I have been. I've purchased it at a year, a year at a time. And it's a subscription that I've played with. The idea of ditching and bringing it back, but I mean, I have it for a year, so I have more time to think about it. Um, but I've always purchased games. That's just what you do on PlayStation. And I know some people are like, yeah, PlayStation doesn't include any other games. They're so anti-consumer. Whether you look at that and think of it as anti-consumer behavior or not, it just is what it is. Um, I also think it's kind of odd that we are now at a point. Oh yeah, pressed out. We're now at a point also, Play mug below, go ahead. Every mug that is purchased, my family gets $4 to buy groceries. And I say it that way because that's exactly what I do with the money. <laughs> it either gets poured back into the business to buy more gear, or uh, it directly gets put into our grocery fund because this is how I make a living, talking about video games and helping you guys decide what's the right way for you to play, as well as get you guys excited. If you're new here because of yesterday's video, welcome. My name is JD Coffee. I've been making coffee and talking about video games here since November and making videos since 20, gosh, 15, but more recently 2021, so back to the thing. I, as a PlayStation owner, have been buying games since, I can't even tell you, since I've always, I've always bought games. That is one, so it's gonna be green, how appropriate. I don't see how the inclusion of Diablo, or the inclusion of, uh, what is this? Uh, Call of Duty, or any of these games coming over to Game Pass here, um, eventually, is necessarily going to change anything for people on PlayStation, right? Because I, as someone who's been on PlayStation, just know that as a PlayStation owner, I'm going to be purchasing the game <coughs> on PlayStation. And as a lot of uh, more mature and... I would say people who are um, more like me, right? A parent, a father, a husband, a, uh, a normal level-headed person, just if they want to play on a different platform or they need access to it, um, my audience uh, is able to just go out and get the other platform, right? Financially, responsibly, also all of that, but we just, we just get the other platform. I don't look at my PlayStation and go, oh, that's all she wrote for PlayStation because once COD's on Game Pass, people on PlayStation are screwed. They're not. They're just going to buy the game. And I strongly believe that with Game Pass, you are going to get all these games for sure because they said you are. But, but, and well, they didn't say you're going to get Call of Duty. They just said Activision Blizzard games. But here's the thing. I strongly believe it's going to be the base game and we're starting to see or we've started to see a big trend in base game digital deluxe game and ultimate right every game coming out with these things and starfield was the first one where we really experienced the future of what gaming looks like starfield being included in game pass day one but if you wanted to play it day zero which was truly the real release date in my opinion uh you had to purchase something for 20 bucks that is useless to you if you don't have Game Pass. So essentially you spend 20 to $30, I don't remember the exact price, you get early access and some extra skins. And this is kind of what I see happening, where you're gonna be given a game day one, it's gonna be the base game. Oh, that's the way to listen, drink that. Oh, that's nice. Oh, that's real nice. Ooh. Anyway, the way I see it is you're gonna be given the game day one in your service. That's just the way it's gonna be. Upon receiving the game, you play it, you do your thing, whatever it's gonna be, but it's the base game. There are gonna be elements of that game that either you gotta grind to a certain thing or whatever it may be, but it's the base. There's gonna be more that you're gonna to have to purchase to have the complete package. Whereas on other platforms, whether it's PlayStation or you know whatever, buying the game, um, has that in its deluxe edition, whatever, which is, you know, often $10 more, right? You got the base for 70, 
then the next one 79 and then the ultimate 100 that's kind of how it goes it varies from time to time but again as someone who has been using a playstation since the playstation one i just have been trained by sony to purchase the games i want to play and if I wait, then I might be able to get them as an included benefit in a service that I pay for. But at the end of the day, I just have to purchase the game, which again is odd to me that this new way of thinking about video games is that Xbox includes their games on their Game Pass. And I'm not even gonna speak into preference here. We're just talking like the, the two different companies because it seems to be what people are you know looking at. People will criticize Xbox and say that the games are lame on their service, they're boring, where are the games, right? Dude, I don't, if, me personally, I don't really have any emotional connection to any games over there on the Game Pass service. There's not a lot there for me. There's some, but nothing really dramatic, right? And over on PlayStation, the PlayStation Plus service has a good amount of games, but I own all the ones that they have on their service, right? Final Fantasy games, Kingdom Hearts at times. Like I own them, right? So, cause they, I like them and I wanna have them and I don't really wanna be worried about whether or not I have to be subscribed to something in order to play those games. And that's something that is crazy because if you use games like on Game Pass for years and years, which I've done, right? Multiple years now. When I'm not subscribed to Game Pass, I don't have anything to play. I have a $300 box with nothing to play because also, I am newer to Xbox, right? I'm newer, I'm part of the Game Pass generation. And with that, um, over the past couple of years, Xbox, even more so now, Xbox has done away with games with gold. So the investment in the Xbox ecosystem, because they made a statement which I thought was really interesting that you can either monetize the community you already have or try to get more people in, right? And I don't know if they're taking shots at anybody, but they are claiming that they're trying to get more people into their service and into their platform so that they can serve more people, which I believe they are doing to a certain extent. But when you think long term, as someone who owns an Xbox and is a Game Pass user, you, as someone made the statement, have a cable box, essentially, unless you've been a Game Pass owner or not Game Pass, an Xbox owner for a while, you essentially are just buying a piece of hardware to have access to channels. Now, those channels may be good, but that's kind of the way it is. And so the thought that PlayStation is done because Game Pass is getting Call of Duty, right? Whatever it may be, is kind of ridiculous because the only thing that changes is people on Xbox are not going to have to pay for Blizzard and Activision games up front. They're only gonna have to pay for it as their service dictates, whether it's $17.99 a month, going up to $20 a month, if that's what's gonna happen, I don't know. Just, that's the way it's gonna be. And as more of these games get added, we'll see what happens, right? As Activision and Blizzard include their games on Game Pass and Microsoft brings their games into that service, is the price gonna go up because the value is increasing? so to speak, right? Because the, the quality or the, the gravity is there, right? Would you pay 20 to $25 a month to play Call of Duty as a service, knowing that you have that? You know, those are questions that are, I think, really important to ask yourself. Does it matter in the grand scheme of things? No, this is video games. It's a hobby and the world's not gonna stop if they charge more money or if one of these companies goes out of business. Sure, it might have a big economical, you know, impact because, or economical, economic impact, because there are a lot of jobs that are tied to these companies. But other than that, oh gosh, I can't believe it. This is this, this. Dude, it's just video games, bro. Like it's something we do to pass the time. I got two kids and a wife that are far more important than anything here that I talk about, right? This is just what I do to make sure that I don't go crazy. I wanna play some Final Fantasy or some Halo Infinite or some Super Mario Wonder just to get my mind off of things, right? Like that's why I do it, right? That doesn't matter. Is my identity tied to Xbox, PlayStation, Nintendo? No, sure. I do like having Nintendo stuff, but if tomorrow Nintendo went under, Papa's going to just do something else. Right? This isn't everything that's me. But I just think it's it's a fascinating time, first off. It's a lot of fun stuff. I think, honestly, I still double, I'm doubling down on the fact that portable PC and that kind of gaming is the future. 
And uh, when Xbox made the statement, or I think it was Phil Spencer made the statement that the next hardware they're gonna release is gonna be some of the best hardware that they've ever, whatever it may be. I think they're gonna be talking about something that's more of a hybrid style thing. I think so. I think that might be, you know, something there. I mean, after all, Xbox is a part of Microsoft and Microsoft is a computer company, you know? So, I, I mean, I think that, I think for sure that we're gonna get something interesting, at least. But this idea that Xbox just sealed the comp or whatever, or even the, the, the opposite, that Xbox is in trouble, they have nothing, this is, you know, just them trying to push Game Pass, like, I don't think they're in trouble. I think they're perfectly fine. They have dozens of studios now. They can make statements like we have the biggest sales ever. We have the most games releasing because they have numbers. They have those statements that they can make because they have so many companies and studios under their belt, right? And the statement that they're releasing, I think 10, they said 10 around that games this year. And people are like, Sony's releasing zero. Sure, first party, yeah. They don't have as many, right? And also, Activision Blizzard has so many, right? Like, it's crazy how many that whole huge group has. But yeah, Sony's not releasing, at least that's what it's been said, first party titles this year. But they're still releasing third party ones, right? People are like, gosh, Sony, Sony gamers must be so sad. They're releasing what was crowned the most anticipated game of the year. Let that sink in for a second. They're releasing Final Fantasy VII Rebirth. Got it right first time. This is the most anticipated game of 2024 as per uh, the Game Awards last year. Final Fantasy 16 won awards at the Game Awards last year. Didn't win Game of the Year. The multi-platform, a multi-platform game won Game of the Year. I think multi-platform games often win Game of the Year. The fact that PlayStation isn't releasing first party titles just means that they're not releasing first party titles. They're releasing the most anticipated game of the year to, to, to PlayStation. Will it open up to PC eventually this year? Probably. I mean, if you look at the asterisks at the end of the uh, trailer, it said, I think May something, May 29th, which is only a couple months after. But they're still releasing games. Just the first party word. All these articles about, gosh, Sony is in trouble. No first party titles. What about third party ones? Some of the greatest games that you play on this these consoles is third party. The first party one, I mean, I guess now there's so many games like Call of Duty is first party to Xbox, but Halo hasn't been relief, releasing stuff. Forza is pretty niche. Gears, kind of not really much there. Like these games, if there's anyone who's releasing the best first party titles out there, it's Nintendo. But like, I just, I don't get it. I think buzzwords and sensationalism is really what's plaguing the industry right now because just with the journalism of political stuff, journalism as a whole doesn't know how to survive and be compelling uh, without being ridiculous. PlayStation's fine. They're gonna release games when they release games and guess what? They're gonna be fun. If you're a level-headed adult, you're just gonna be like, cool, that's a game I wanna play, or nah, not for me, so I'm gonna do something else. Xbox is gonna release games when they release them. They're gonna release a bunch of games. If you're into it, awesome. You're gonna have a good time, and you're gonna play some fun games at it. Like, that's pretty sick, right? We're gonna play some cool games on Xbox, and it's gonna be a part of your subscription service. How great is that? Bringing value to something that you're already paying for, right? That's awesome. Actually serving you as a gamer by bringing you the games that they said they were gonna bring you. Perfect, love it. And Nintendo is gonna bring you something. <laughs> who knows? Hopefully something this year, but who knows? The predictions on when we're gonna get a direct is so funny. People are backpedaling and saying all the most ridiculous, oh, uh, it's on hold. Oh, 
dude, just make yourself a cup of coffee, sit back, put on a video game and enjoy yourself. Because at the end of the day, that's what this is made to do. We are playing video games to enjoy them. Stop collecting them so you have just a library bloated full of nonsense, subscribing to every service so you can play every game under the sun. Just put your money where your mouth is, buy a game, or download a game for your subscription service and play it, for goodness sakes. Stop focusing on everybody else. Just enjoy yourself. And if you want to enjoy yourself with other people, this Discord community that I have been a part of, the channel's Discord community, is awesome. And until the end of the month, it's open to everybody. But once March 1st hits, it is going to be closed down to just members of the channel and of the Patreon that is being set up. And so get in now while it's still there. You'll get an OG um, role, I guess. Uh, in there and you'll be able to be a part of that community and then if it's after um, March 1st 2024 then all you have to do is be a part of the members here on this channel and also over on patreon and you'll be granted access to that as well as a bunch of other perks too so um, yeah the discord is open as of today and uh, we'll be members only come March 1st all right that's all for me today this was a delicious AeroPress coffee, really into it. Coffee classes to come, but that is gonna be members only. All right, guys. Enjoy yourselves today. Play a video game. Let me know what you're gonna be playing in the comments below. And as always, gosh, that was a good cup of coffee. <sighs> Happy gaming.